welcome back to our class don't forget to subscribe if it is your first time to visit our channel let's look at um, binocular vision so is a vision using two eyes with uh, with overlapping fields of view allowing good perception of uh, depth it means that you can judge exactly in which distance uh, and how big is the size of an organism using these eyes. So it means that you have multiple images which are being formed, but um, the brain is supposed to interpret it as one uh, organism or one individual being viewed. So uh, if you look at this, you see that a lot of light is entering uh, with different light rays, but when they enter, because I have one eye here and I have another eye here, it means that I have different images which are formed one image from this side for example and one image from this side for example and then when they are being sent to the brain it is being interpreted as one object so binocular vision is very important it's very important in developing good perception in developing good depth perception uh, which in turn affects the coordination and the hand to eye hand to eye skill it means that if you're using two eyes if you close one eye and then you try to do a target yes of for example a small hole then you won't be able to do it so it means that if you use two eyes then you can judge the actual distance for example um catching a basketball making sense of classroom instruction on the blackboard or screen and then performing simple tasks such as walking and running so you you require it means that a person who is having two eyes is more advantageous so uh, uh, that is binocular vision. So this makes us to go to what you call accommodation. Accommodation, when we talk about accommodation, we don't mean the accommodation where you stay, no. Here is like ability of the eye to see near and far object. So it means that it's supposed to change the, the, the focal length of the, of, of the lens so that it can see the near and far object. So it's the process of changing the, the, the shape of the eye lens to focus the near and the far object. So it means that the, the eye is supposed to change its shape. Basically, the lens is supposed to change its shape so that it changes the focal length. If the focal length is changed, then it means that the distance uh, where the image is being formed behind uh, being formed also changes. So it means that now the eye will be able to see the near and the far object. So, Let's look at uh, the near vision. When you talk about near vision, you're talking about an object which is less than six mirrors from that object. More than six mirrors from that object, then it means that that is a far object. So what happens during near vision? One, there are some muscles which you need to understand in this case so that you can understand how it operates. And then number two, when you are trying to describe near vision, when you understand the near vision, the far vision, it will be just the opposite of the near vision. So there are some muscles which call the ciliary muscles. And then there are other muscles which you call the suspensory ligaments. Then you have the lens. Yes, you have the lens. And then you can talk about the light. So let, let, let's try to describe this. So if you say that ciliary muscles, uh, if these are the ciliary muscles, yes, if this contract, then this one must relax or they must loosen. So they work antagonistically in the opposite way. So ciliary muscles will contract. When the ciliary muscles contract, yes, if the ciliary muscles contract, then this one must relax because they work in the opposite way. Suspensory ligament must slacken. It means that they must become loose. And then they, because they are uh, loosened, then it means that this one, the, the, the tension on the lens will, has, has decreased. The lens become more convex. It means that light rays uh, are refracted more because it is coming from a big object or a nearby object, so it looks to be big. So uh, light rays are being reflected more and then the clear image is being focused on the retina. Let me give you an example. If you are viewing an object which is near, so it means that that object, you see it as uh, a very big object. So it means that it will require a big lens, yes, or a thick lens or a more convex lens so that it, that lens can bend this light rays, yes, which has come with a big field of view 
onto the retina. So if the lens was small, then it means that that power of the lens is not going to be enough to bend this light onto the retina. Therefore, the lens must be big. So when you're explaining this, how do I know that the suspensor ligament must relax or slacken and then the muscles must contract? If the lens is big, so if you are viewing an object which is near, then it means that the, the lens must become big. Near object looks big, therefore the lens must be big enough to uh, bend this light from this object. Therefore, if the lens is big, it means that it's more convex, then it means that the, 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 what is attached to the lens must relax or it must slacken, which is the suspensor ligament. And if the suspensor ligament uh, slackens, then it means that uh, the CR muscles must contract because they work antagonistically. From there, now you can start the ciliary muscles contract, the suspensor ligament becomes slacking. When uh, they slacken, the tension the lens decreases, the lens becomes more convex, and then the refracting power increases, light rays are bent to the retina uh, more, light rays are being bent more, and then the image, a clear image is focused on the retina. That's how you can try to explain that. Then if you look at the distant object, it's just the opposite of the near vision, more than six mirrors from the object. So in this case, we will see that uh, it's just the opposite of the other one. The ciliary muscles relax, the other one contracted. Then suspensor ligaments become tightened. It means that the other one is lacking. It becomes taut. It, it becomes tightened, like becomes stiff. So the other one was slacking, like relaxed. The tension on the lens increases. Then it means that the other one, the tension on the lens decreased. And then the lens became less convex. It means that it became small. And then the other one, the lens became uh, big. If you do the tension on the lens, the lens become less convex. And if you release the tension on the lens, then the lens becomes um, more convex. That's how it works. Then you're saying that light rays are being reflected too. Um, are being reflected less. Why? Because the, less, the lens is less convex. And then clear image is being focused onto the retina. So this is how it, it works. That if this one becomes, it's, um, it, it relaxes, this one must uh, contract. And then this one becomes, if it contracts, it means that this one is pulling this side. And then also this one is pulling this side. And then the lens becomes small which means that the lens becomes less convex. And then because it is less convex, thickness is too small. It means that its refracting power is small, is less. Therefore, it means that uh, the light rays are not going to be bent as much as like that one of um, near object. And the, that's why you, when you are seeing the object which is far, you see it as small. Why? The light rays come as a very small beam and then it is being bent to the retina uh, and then an, a clear image is being focused there. So that's how you can differentiate between these two. What about uh, pupillary mechanism? 